السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Brothers and sisters, welcome to our monthly program for this month of uh, February. And we have a special guest with us this evening as we've been advertising, uh, Brother Habib Qadri, who is an educator, author, and youth activist. He's also the MCC Academy Superintendent and Chairman of Muslim Youth of North America Advisory Board. He was also one of the five private school teachers to be selected for the 2019 class of nationally distinguished principals by the National Association of Elementary School Principals. It is indeed our, uh, our privilege and honor for him to be with us this evening, inshallah. Before we get to the program, there's a couple of important announcements that I'd like to make, which is in regards to the kids that are here, we want to make sure that your children, if they're ages between ages 6 and 11, Make sure that either they're in room 110 and 112. And it's very important for us for this evening because we are going to talk about some subjects that are important for the parents to pay attention to, but not necessarily for the children. So if you have children here that are under 11, make sure that they are in room 110 and 112. We are also live streaming this program, so you can check this out later on on our page. And if you think it's appropriate, you can share that with the children as well. So again, if you have children that are under 11, make sure that they're in room 110 and 112. The other thing is we are offering, as you walked in, you saw, we are offering free COVID testing as well. So if you need to get tested, make sure that you're taking advantage of that as well. With that being said, naturally, we are going to begin the program with the recitation of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. And I will invite our Imam, Sheikh Ibrahim Dardasawi, to come up here and open the program with the recitation of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we need you to pay attention to be uh, awake uh, with our dear brother Habib Qadri with a very important topic. I welcome you all. Uh, and we're happy and really privileged. I second and I repeat what Sheikh Omar made and what he stated that we're very privileged to have. Brother Habib Qadir with us today and inshallah may Allah benefit from him and benefit all of us inshallah and may Allah accept this gathering for his sake Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا لرأيته خاشعا 
لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو لا هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماء يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير for that wonderful recitation as always Without further ado, I'd like to invite Sheikh uh, Brother Habib Qadri up on here to begin the program, inshallah. Can you lift mic? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Na'amadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'firuhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakalu alayh. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik salam. Thank you so much, I know on a Saturday, to, uh, to come take your time. But inshallah ta'ala, um, I am going to just take my mask off. I'm far away from you guys, inshallah, just so I could kind of speak better. Just want to go ahead and begin, because we want to maximize this potential uh, time, and then we also want to make sure we have time for Q&A. But one of the first things I wanted you to talk about, one of the things, one of the books we wrote, one was called War Within the Hearts, The Struggles of the Muslim Youth, where were issues that kids were going through. And me, as a, being an individual who grew up here in, in uh, uh, Chicago, went through the kindergarten, high school, college here, and have my own kids who are teenagers, you go through these experiences. So one of the other books we wrote was Parenting, Who Said It Was Easy? Because one of the first things that we realized, with, especially with kids, I've had the opportunity to go throughout the United States and overseas, all of us, someone we know of a family member, have challenges. And a lot of times when we talk to someone, people say, I can't believe this. It's because of the West. This is happening to my child. And I always want to remind everyone, this is not some, some new phenomenon here. Yes, no doubt about it, there are more opportunities for causing trouble, our problems, our concerns. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that in Surah Anfal, that gets what? Our progeny, our children, will be a test, can be a test for us. At a certain time, could be from a health situation, could be from some social issue that they might have, through some emotional issue. 
they might, at a certain time, academically, they might struggle. There's going to be a moment in that child's life that there's going to be some struggles. And how do we deal with it as parents plays a big part. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ones he loves the most, he tests the most. So when we sometimes say, I can't believe this is happening to me, we have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his, his, uh, his prophets to learn also. We have first examples, Adam alayhi salam. This is before YouTube. This is before video games. This is before TV. This is not too much other outside factors. You have one brother jealous of another brother to a point he kills him. Jealousy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an example of that. Allah gives us another example. He didn't just, here's an example where it didn't say, I send, you know, he sent his son to Sunday school for five years, or he sent him to once a week halakha for three years, or ten years. It is known that when his son, when the great flood happened, that the scholars say that his son was not even ten years old. He's not even fifty years old. He, they're saying that the, his son was about 300 years old when the great flood happened, Al Prophet Nuh alayhi salam's son. And what does Prophet Nuh alayhi salam do? He makes dua, he tells his son, come, 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 then makes dua when he goes, oh father, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain, I will be fine. He keeps making dua. So one lesson for us, we keep on making dua and never lose hope in our kids. Even if they do the worst situation, I, we're going to talk about this a little later, one of the key factors I'm going to tell you right now, is whatever the situation with your kid, you don't lose hope like, I can't believe it. I've seen so many parents, I'm going to give you stories later. Well, you know what, I don't care. How, what are people going to think? What are people going to think? You know who Akhandan is? Or it can't be this. Because of this one kid, that's why this is happening. So I want to humble all of us. If we think our Akhandan, or our, 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 our group, or our family is just so respectful that our kids can never do anything wrong, it's always that child or that child, let us all be humbled by the next example. We all know this individual's grandfather was a prophet, his father was a prophet, he himself was a prophet, and we're talking about Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, and then what happens? His brothers, should we kill him, should we not kill him, I don't know, what should we do? Let's throw him in the well. Even once, even his father said, I don't know, don't go, I know, don't, father, trust us, we will protect him. Even when the, pro, the, the father had some inklings of something might not be right, you see that a, this, a, a prophet's family, that they wanted to kill him, not kill him, to throw him in the well and see what happens. And it's an example for us when we have, why? Because one of the first things I want to talk about right here is we always like to blame someone else first. And then we don't look at ourselves. No doubt about it, other factors do play a part. Other people in the community are going to, but we also want to realize that these challenges Allah says might happen, and the way we deal with it, we can also make sure that we can get rewarded for it. That's why Allah is al-adl, the just. Just like the Shaykh just he talked about Allah, some of his attributes from Surah Hashr, Allah is just. Even if someone who loses a child when they're young, and they're patient with Allah when they lose a baby, that child will, on the day of judgment, say, Ya Allah, I need this person to intercess, you know, there'll be an intercessor for that parent to go into Jannah, inshallah. Allah is just, if we, when you know we have the challenge, you go back to him and deal with it in the proper way, Allah, inshallah, will open up doors, inshallah. And if there's some people who Allah does not guide, as long as we know, as I remind our kids all the time, we do our best, and inshallah, Allah will take care of the rest. And that's all we could do. So, we have... From Adam alayhi salam example, Prophet knew for so many years, but never lost, never lost hope until Allah commanded to no matter. You cannot, he's not from the guidance. And then he stopped making dua. When Allah made that commandment, it's done, it's done. But then you have Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam where even righteous of the righteous families could have an internal situation. Or even this idea of us as parents, what we can learn. I'm going to go both ways for the kids and parents here. What can we do for Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam is that some kids might feel like you like, you like your other sibling more than you. You like my, your, my sister more than I do. Right? Everyone's going to have those comments. I have two daughters and a son. And everyone, it's, it's there. I know my, my, you know, my, my, my youngest son is like mama's boy. Right? And my, and my daughter, like, you know, it's, just, it's human nature. When you have that, when it's tough, 
I have to, you know, I'm, I'm more tough on my son, right? And he always goes to his mom. And vice versa, the daughters, they all come to me, right? Like, okay, mama, have that because we just have those balances. Everyone has that. Now, do we love all of them? Yes. But are there going to be some things we like about some more than others? Could be. But we try to be fair about those things, right? We have to be honest and say, okay, do we do this? Can we do this? Because Allah gives an example where some of them got to a point that got jealous. Allah protect uh, our kids and our families from these. But we get, Allah gives us another example, a Prophet Ibrahim salam, where it's not the kids. The father's not practicing the deen. Right? How can we go against our forefathers? If you look at any story, when you ask, when you look at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, life, what, what did the, the, the uncles who went against him, what did they say? How can we go against our forefathers? Sometimes in our homes, we have a lot more, again, culture is beautiful. I love our culture. I love the, uh, from our, I'm from Southeast Asia. I also love the American culture. But again, in American culture, there's some goods, and there's not some good things. And we have to decipher. But that's why also we have to realize that as kids in this society, they want, we're going to, we're, as we go l later on, we're going to talk about examples of where we have to make sure we balance and just say, well, that's how it is. That's how we do it in our family. That, it doesn't matter when qu our kids question. Now, why is this important? Now, if we know that Allah gives us a test, then the question comes in and say, what's our purpose? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, I have created jinn and man for the purpose of worship. Worship in our deen is not just the ibadat of just five daily prayers, which is, which is mandatory, zakat, som, hajj, but then the idea of mu'amalat, dealing with others. And you see for many kids that even the salah, the questioning God, might not be an issue. But now you've seen it more and more, this idea of questioning God's existence. But the other aspect of it is just dealing with social issues. And Allah said, you know, we, to show kids and say, if you answer and deal with it in a proper way, Allah will reward you. So Allah SWT has that. But what happens for young ones here, sometimes you think, well, this deen is all about just afterlife, afterlife. Think about from all the du'as, and this is a reminder for all of us parents too. From all the du'as of the Qur'an, and from all the du'as of the Prophet ﷺ, we have du'as. Going to the bathroom, Allahumma azuka min khubsi wal khabais. Eating your food, Allahumma barak lana fi marazakhtana, so on and so forth. Leaving the house, bismillahi tawakkaltu Allah. Right? There's du'as and du'as that we all know. Right? Eating, sleeping, food, uh, all of them. And then we know du'as that we know that we have rapana du'as. But when it was asked, think about this. The Super Bowl for, you know, the Super Bowl for Muslims is Hajj. Once in your life, inshallah, that you can get there, that hopefully with the right intentions, Allah will hopefully will wipe away all your sins. And when you ask scholars, what dua should you make? You know, you put on your ihram, they say, Ya say la baik, Allahumma la baik. But when you go into tawaf, the scholars say, make any dua you like. But the Prophet said that, last, every, the, uh, uh, that for every circuit, the last part of every circuit, every round, between the Yemeni corner and uh, Hajjat al-Aswad, that last round, you make sure you make one specific dua. At Hajj. And for young ones, I want you to realize how this, how, well, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the beauty of our deen. Right? And for our others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us an A. The, tells the Prophet, make sure they make any dua and tawaf, but make sure don't forget this dua. Rabbana, our Lord, atina, give us. Fit dunya in this world. Hasanatun, good things. Wafil akhirat, end of hereafter. Hasanatun, good things. Waqina, adabana, and save us from the hellfire. Allah is nothing wrong to say, Allah wants you to have the best in this world. For young ones, there's nothing wrong to have a nice car, nice clothes, go on vacation. But Allah wants to make sure that same effort that you do as young individuals in the academic world or in this world or even playing sports, which I love, right? And you put that time and effort, but Allah saying, hey, can you give that at least even give me 50% of that same effort in your deen? That's how Allah is that merciful. In the same way, parents, this dua should be a reminder that when it comes to academics, we will go to that school district. We will make sure that we pay Kumon $50 an hour for tutoring or this American some person or that person for math, science, or social studies. Nothing wrong. But when it comes to dean or dean programs, Sunday school is asking for $200 for the whole year. Khadi Saab is asking $10 an hour. Are they? You guy? Like, I want us to think about how shaitan has deceived us. Anytime when it comes to religious thing, wait, wait a minute, they're charging for this? Or for that? But when it comes on the academic, is that sometimes we have to realize the balance of where, how we have that, the idea of what is important. 
of Allah says, no, ask for the best. Get the best in this world. There's nothing wrong, but we have to say, are we? Just may Allah reward all you parents who say, you know, on a Saturday, I'm going to come here. Why? Because I'm going to try to see what can I do to make my child better. And then the young ones who came here and said, man, you know, tomorrow's going to be the Super Bowl, and I could have been right now on Fortnite. I could have been on a video game, but now I have to sit here and watch this uncle or look tall, Daisy uncle. Well, what is he trying to talk about? I don't know, right? Some of them might be like thinking in their heads why they're here. But the question is that give me that opportunity uh, of these challenges. But for the young ones, I got some other slides coming up in a few minutes. So now we got to go back and say, um, because they're young and adults at the same time, a lot of times I have more just parents, because, so I'm going to try to flip back and forth so I don't lose their attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Muk that this life is a test. You will, this life will be a test. But Allah also gives an example that because of this test, Allah shows us example. Why do you, a lot of ones, say, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? Allah gives us example through Adam alayhi salam. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about Adam alayhi salam? That, and that story, he did not say, don't eat from the tree. He says, takhribu, don't go near the tree. This is a key for young ones. When your kids say, why can't you? When I grew up, a lot of times people are like, why can't you do this? It's haram. Why, uh, you know, but why is it haram? Asking too many questions is haram. Right? Don't ask too many questions. This is a society, which I'm going to show you another slide after this. We ask questions. Our deen asks, let us ask questions. And you'll see how important how we retain information is through questions. So it's so important that you'll see one of the reasons we wrote the war within the hearts is because there are struggles that we went through. I always thought, like, am I the only one going through these questions in my head? Because many times when we don't know how to answer it, we just say, don't ask. And if you don't ask right now, our kids are asking Shay Google. And Shay Google, when you type it up, the guy who you don't know what website, and some of these are by Islamophobes, the first four or five websites, and they'll have a person with a mashallah looking beard, looks religious, this guy, he has to be right. And kids could shop for their fatwa. And exactly what's going to make them feel. So it's so important that we have to have opportunities where they could ask, and maybe one time we're just all kids only, no parents here, so then we can just really ask and, and, and have those questions kind of taken care of. So Allah gives us times, and I'm not going to go th uh, through all that. But the aspect is that for your young ones and for us, when our parents are like, how can our kid do this? What's the challenge? Think about this. How did Iblis trick Adam al Islam? He didn't say, oh, check this fruit out. It's so tasty, yad. No. He didn't say, oh, how juicy is it? Oh, you got to have this, Adam al Islam. He tricked him. I want it. We have to read, go through our series to, un to understand and say, wait a minute. He says, look, if you, you can live here forever. If you eat this, you could live like angels. In Jannah. Their intention might be good, but if Allah's commandments there, Allah's alalim. For young ones, if there's a rule, there's a rule. That's what Allah said, don't go near. Because when you go near the tree, he knew that Iblis is going to make things sound good. He's going to make it sound good. And what does Iblis, when Iblis, when Allah tells him to bow down to Adam, and he does it, Iblis says what? All right, first he gets permission until the end of time. Can I take people, you know, take them away? from your believing in you. But then what does he say? I'm going to come from the front. I'm going to come from the back. I'm going to come from the right. I'm going to come from the left. Iblis is not just going to be like, ah, do haram. Think about all the young ones in the 70s and 80s, what was popular was smoking. Right? For all the parents who are, some of you guys, if you notice smoking, how, what the commercials were smoking was, they would even make all the coolest guys, would be like, even the way you even hold the thing would have been like this. And it just like right now, all the vaping, when they make those things, like, whoa, look how nice they're making it. The they don't make it look like that. One, and guess what? If you young ones right now, I ask you, if you would drink this, all the ones in the back, and one out of three of you would die from this in 20 years, would you take the chance? The young in the back, yes or no? In the back, just raise your hand if you would. All right, everyone's like, my parents are here, I won't. All right, right. But to think about this, if one out of three, if I had said, if you drink this for 20 years, you will die from it. People would not make that chance if you just brought it up. But smoking one out of three will die from smoking from cancer. And why? They, but at the end, they made it look good. Vaping, when they restarted off, the commercials are going to, Iblis factor, they're not going to show the bad. bad. Alcohol, tomorrow, the, the game is popular, but the most dangerous time to drive is after the game. Why? Because so many people might be drunk. 
right? They talk, they have a commercial, and they'll always be like, just uh, drive safely. Just a reminder, right? Because they're not going to give you a specific thing. And so if you don't cut at the roots, that's what's going to happen. So why we, when we talk to kids, you're going to realize how important for us to understand what Allah has set up. And when our kids do something, so how can they do this? Sometimes they might be deceived. The child's brain does not fully develop until 25. And especially in their teenage years, the part of the brain that doesn't develop is their reasoning. Right? They're impulsive. You know how they're like, why'd you do it? I don't know. I just did it. Why'd you hit your brother? I don't know. He just bothered me. I hit him. I hit him back. So they're now always there. Right? It's like, you know, you like, then, then, then later on, like, yeah, that, that was bad. I shouldn't have done that. Their impulsivity is there. That's why there's sometimes, but you're giving kids to have these specific rules, it becomes problematic. Now, some of these slides after this, if you have young ones, if they're paying attention, then I, I just want you to be aware because I need to give you guys examples. So uh, just parents, just keep this in mind. Uh, but not, uh, after a few slides, we're going to kind of talk about a few things. But Glasser's percentage of how students retain information. How they retain information is very important. 10% is what they read. So young ones, it's the way when they read, that's how mostly they retain information. So if you're telling them, Beta, I need you to read about the, this book, about Islam, and that's it. Because you will never go to a doctor if they just said, oh, I'm going to surge you on you. I just read a book. I know this. I went on WebMD. I know a lot of us are WebMD doctors. Like, what's wrong with me? I read this idea. And, you know, what, it, what, what does WebMD do? WebMD, what it does, it brings more anxiety in there. Because everyone reads their issue. And I, like, you know, my, my, my mom, you know, like, then they'll go and read something. Like, I think this is this. I'm like, just, just wait. Let's ask a doctor. Let's not get all worried. But we have these specific things. 20% is what they hear. 30% is what they see. It's how you retain information. I know some of you guys are the mashallah, you know, people. Like, no, I don't, if I read something, mashallah, I'm good. But 30% is what they read. 50% of how people retain information is what they see and hear. Let's go back to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. fi rasulullahi uswatan hasana. In the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of example. Everything that you, he, he, what he told us about, he also did. When he, they said to be patient, they saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be patient. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hey, you know what? We have to now uh, go to Hijrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made him go through that same process. Everything that they, he did, he said, he also did. So that's why it's so important for all of us as parents. What they see at home is going to be important. And what they hear. Right? We can't have these situations and say, you know, uh, see in here. When I grew up and then you have some situations like, okay, well, you need to make sure you get along with your brothers and siblings. And then, then I remember one kid says, yeah, I told my dad, I said, but why don't you talk to your own bro uh, father, uh, brother? Well, that's a business deal. Well, that's because something else happened. Right? Because if you don't see certain things, if at the margin there are going to be some arguments and kids see them, like, well, what, what's the idea of getting along? Or if you're driving and you're getting mad at someone, you cut someone off, and then you, make a, you say something that you shouldn't be saying, and then the next time that kid gets in trouble, I'm like, well, 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 when you get mad, you said this. This is where I learned it from. Right? So the idea, again, we're going to make our mistakes. But what we also have to realize is that what we see and hear. But that's why you young ones, why your parents worry about your friends is because who you hang out with, because what you see and what you hear with them is going to also be inculcated in your brain. The video games you watch, after a while, again, we're not saying haram, halal, so don't, don't panic. I'm not a scholar. They're like, oh, my God, he's going to say something that's going to get me in trouble. But I'm saying is what you see in here, and especially when you get into those ch chat groups where everyone's like, yeah, 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 I'm going to kill that. Beep, 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 beep. Those things are psychological. And think about what you see in here, and I'm going to get back to experience in a few seconds. 70% of how people learn is through discussion. Again, what? Through discussion. I brought this up earlier. You have to give opportunities to kids to ask questions. Even our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why was there some hadith, a few, where he would ask the question? The Sahabas would stay quiet, and they say, "Allah and His Messenger know best." The Prophet knows he knows the answer, but the idea is to clarify certain things. And if people didn't have uncomfortable asking questions, then there would be a problem, right? How do we know about certain things? Wait, how do we know about his? his uh, uh, 
uh, in his private life, in his house, is that someone to have asked us, well, we need clarification. What was there? How was the prophet? What did he do? How did he eat? How did he drink? How did he deal with the situation? And if you don't get clarification, it becomes problematic. For example, when I, when I grew up, I lo- my Allah wanted to give my, my grandmother a high place in Jannah. Love my Nanima. Right? So she was in my, you know, you know, back then we had two bedroom apartments, so she was in my same room. You know, so my, you know, my grandmother would like be on the one bed, and you know, so something happens over there. And sometimes you pray Salah, and you know, a young kid, I'm 12, 11 years old, and I had to pray. She's like, after you finish, fold the, fold the uh, prayer rug. Fold the prayer rug? I'm thinking, okay, you know, you know why? You know, in, a, in, a Urdu, in a Urdu, like why? Because Shaitan's going to pray on it. Right? It's a, it's, a, it's a cultural comment that Iblis will pray on it. I'm like, Does it, isn't that, why, isn't that don't, don't you want him to do so too? That's his whole problem. Right? You make a comment now. If I say, like, I mean, like, you know, we sometimes have, you just, this is why, right? Or finish the Quran. Now, if someone just says, hey, just better have that, or the Quran. If you don't close it, Shaitan's going to read it. I want him to read it, right? Making my life miserable, right? You know, that punk, right? It's causing me problems, right? But what happens is that if you don't, you give just general answers without answering it properly, then you start questioning, like, does this faith really make sense? Right? But now when you say, hey, look, Allah cuts things at the root. Like when I went back to Adam and said, look, even your father had made a mistake. Why Allah? So when I, why can't you go to a club? Because when you get there, you might slowly, maybe one time you might listen to it. When I talk to young kids, sometimes you might listen, and the next time you're going to say, well, I'm just going to dance to it. Then maybe there might be drinking, so maybe I'm going to try it one time. It's Allah, shaitan's going to slowly. When I used to work with kids in drug rehab in the city of Chicago, non-Muslim kids, you know, just to get that clear, right? Uh, I worked at Project Education Plus. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Wellness Center. And, 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 and there, and, there uh, um, and then some of the people that would come in, and then they would tell us uh, um, that the uh, when a kid, when you, someone gets in, in, on drugs, they don't start off from the small, right? Like when you ask a young kid, hey, Ahmad, Fatima, Johnny, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? When you're a young kid, they're like, I want to be a fireman because they see like a fire truck. You might say, hey, you know, I want to be a baseball player. Sometimes a kid likes to look, I want to be a garbage man. You know, kids have that. Then you'd be like, no, 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 no. Doctor, doctor, right? Remember this word. Remember this word, right? You know, whatever it is. But everyone has that thing, right? Because when you're young, no one wants to say, you, know, you ever see, hey, hey, Johnny, hey, Emma, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I can't wait to be a cocaine addict. Woo-hoo. Let me sniff it. Woo, it'll be so much. No one would ever say, that's where I want to be. 30 million people in America are on drugs. And overseas, too. I've gone to... Just this last month and a half, I was in Dubai, Qatar, Turkey, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. So take away Saudi Arabia because I was for Umrah. All the other four places, I was dealing with you. And when talking to people, there are also challenges there too, right? In Pakistan, there's a lot of opium that comes back and forth. So you will see that people will get challenges too, but no one gets that far. How does it happen? First, they're hanging out with friends. That's why you young ones, when, they t- when your parents are worried about your friends, because they're like, all right. When you get there, you never know who someone's going to introduce you. Just like when you learn a bad word. You learn it from somewhere. Someone's friend, something you watch. It happens somewhere. Sometimes good stuff you learn from a friend, sometimes bad. That's why you young ones, that is, you know, your parents worry about you. Vice versa, parents, that's going to be a thing. That, that same child, one to six years old, like right now when you see Masha them is running around, right, what, what are they? they'll tell you everything. Mommy, you know, after, I guarantee you when their school's over, I mean, uh, this talk's over, they're going to say, Ami, I did this, and we played this game, and you did this. And when you picked them up from school, they're like, Ami, I had, it was school was so much fun. And, I, you know, then, and they talk to you, and then when they say, Assalamu alaikum, they say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And you're like, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Wa alaikum salam. And they're young, they're like, come over here, read Surah Fatiha, they read out loud, all your relatives are like, oh, MashaAllah. They're like, yeah, everyone's happy. That same child, 7 to 13, and we still kind of, you know, you have that, Berta, come here, like, you know, they give you the same thing. But then so many of these parents are like, that same Laduka Kardu, the Habibti, that same child at 13 years old, something changes, right? Then, Assalamu Alaikum becomes Salam. How's your day? Good. What you do? Nothing. How's school? Boring. I have to have a computer all the time. You don't know. You don't understand. You don't know me. You don't know my life. It's so miserable. About all this stuff, right? I'm not saying all the kids over there. You guys are the master of the kids, but I'm just talking about other kids I deal with, right? That challenge that, oh, it cannot, you know, nothing happens. So why is this important? Because 80% of what, what, what they experience personally 
is huge. What you see. So young ones, when you're around people, when you're playing ball, and guys, and I played high school and college ball, and one of the issues that one of the guys, when, I, when we travel to like Long Beach, Arizona State University, North Carolina, all these places, and you're there, there's language that's used. Now it's a choice. Make it or not. Even my father, when I, when I traveled at AU, I remember at that time I didn't like it. My coach said, hey, I think he has talent. Can you travel with us? This is in the 90s where there's like not travel teams where there not that many. And my father said, uh, finally, okay, but he has to be your roommate. I'm like, Bob, I gotta be the roommate with the coach? Right? I think the coach was, I was like, what? Right, you know? Right? And then I remember the second, then, the second time he let me stay with the others, but I remember 10.30 at night. This is before phones. I know you, I get young ones can't ever think there's a phone, but there was a day in life when we had no phones. Right? You should, take, you should one time as a parent just have like a challenge, take those rotary phones and say, see how it works. Take them like 20, I, I did it with my kids, like try to figure out how it works. Like, like, how does it work? But the idea was that I remember at 10, 11.30 at night, he would call Isha, like, you know, to make sure I didn't leave the hotel room. Six, you know, fudge your time, 6.30, wake up. Because at that time, it was like, someone's going to do it. Now kids are like, man, what is wrong with your dad? But at the end, it made sense. Right? And, one of my, and one of my roommates, you know, Cottrell Davis, he was my roommate. And he would, like, you know, he would joke around about it, this and that. But when I was in college, he was an uh, uh, underclassman, and he, and, he, and, he, uh, and he passed away. He got, he got shot. He was you know, affiliated with some gangs in, in, our, in our area, and he had got shot. The coach had called me and told me, hey, you know, it, 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 you know, that he had passed away. You'll see in life, like, you know, now you see, and he, and he, I remember him saying, he's like, look, I'm joking around with you, but at least your dad cares about you. I don't even know how to dad you. Right? He's like, you know, I'm, you know, we're playing around. And I remember once got a step, because they used to kind of, I was like the only like Southeast Asian kid, like you know maybe this whole, everywhere I went, right? And so they, you know, and, but they said, look, man, there, there's something about that you have this purpose, you know, have that, and you'll see that things could change, right? And so a lot of us we look as young ones that we think, oh man, the other side might be great, but sometimes they're going through their own struggles, and then you'll see that has a place. So 80% is personally. If you want kids to akhlaq and stuff, then they need to see it with you too, and they need to experience it. One of the things that when I used to complain about Sunday school, the only reason I couldn't do anything, because all my whole 80s went where I couldn't watch any Bears game. This is before you could videotape it. You could watch it on YouTube. So all the great years of the Bears, we were stuck in Sunday school. So I had some resentment, right? But the problem was I could never complain to my mom and dad because they didn't just drop me off and go shopping and say, Bear, that game was awesome. He was there doing hat tafsir, or he taught Sunday school. So even now, for me to say something, it's like, well, you know what? But at the end, he's here too, right? And I remember when he complained, so, you know, you have a, you know, 14 years old, you know, you're now you're graduating. Well, so if you had all these issues, we're trying our best. This is all we know. We're trying to teach. We have limited knowledge and stuff. You know what? Why don't you teach? So at 14 years old, I taught kindergarten, first grade, Islamic studies. And what it was is that that opened my thing into education. My, alhamdulillah, my father was very supportive of me to go into this field. But the idea is that until you experience that, it plays a big part. But also, it's so important for us to realize that learning through experience, if you want our kids to be grateful, we also have to show them situations. Right now, kids who don't sometimes see the challenge that people are getting. One of the things, like I, I give you an example. My, uh, my father came in in the 60s. So he has eight siblings. My mom has eight siblings. And all of them came slowly through our two-bedroom apartment, one bathroom. You know, they all say my parents still live in the same place. Uh, and so you might say, okay, you know, people are coming. What is it? How many family members come and go? You know, 70, one family stays for three, four months until they get settled. So, you know, you get settled, 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 settled. And you think about it. So I went to India when I was six. Can't remember too much. Eight. Now I'm 14. Teenage years. Eighth grade. Seventh, eighth grade. I go there, right? You come in, get off the airplane just to get everything out. Takes all day. Finally, when you get there, the octo, you see buffalo, sheep everywhere. I'm like, oh my god, you know? It's there. It's hot. Now I'm like, kind of remembering all this. Go through. You come out. You finally get home. You want to drink some water, but you can't drink from the faucet. You have to first boil. This is in the '80s. You have to boil the water. Then you have to put it in the refrigerator, but the refrigerator electricity goes out all the time, so the refrigerator doesn't all work. So you just have to drink it as is. Right? Then you have those, uh, the mosquitoes, they love American blood, and they keep on biting you all the time. Then the only thing that really you like about India is the food, and you eat the food, but then the stomach can't deal with it. Then you have to go outside to the, the, the bathroom, which is like an odd house, which is on the ground. Then when you open inside, you got you know, uh, geckos or chipolis over there. Right? 
Then you got to watch about the spiders. Then about the gin that's in there. That's how I learned my dua, you know, about the, you know, going inside, put the gin inside those bathrooms. Then the lota parties and whatever leftover water that maybe rain and everything inside of it's another whole problem. Then, boy, that time I hate it. My father purposely sent me to uh, the gown, like Salem. He's like, no, no, I want him to see the other side. One and a half week there where I came off the train, they picked me up in a, 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 a buffalo cart. Sat in a buffalo cart, got into the house, lanterns. Lanterns, like, you know, you know, the whole thing. They said, after markup, you can't go. The bathroom was outside two rocks. They said, you have to watch about the snakes and this and that, so please try to hold on to it until the morning. I was like, what? I hate it. But when I came back to America, you know, I don't know if you ever saw Shawshank Redemption. I'm not saying you watch a movie, but when he's like, I was like, shukran ya Allah for everything. Now it's about family, it's about community, it's making sure everybody takes care of it. Any new refugee comes, we got to make sure we take, the, take care of that. Right? That's insane. Because one of the things is that if you don't experience things, it plays a big part. What are we seeing with the new generation? Right? They, when something doesn't happen, they get all mad. Right? Frustrated. Right? They get more anxiety than ever before. There's more challenges. These kids are, because now if you don't, when you, start, when you go through stuff, it brings resilience. It brings grit. And we have to realize when we want our kids to benefit. So something like Ramadan. In Ramadan, if you really appreciate it, it's not just going and giving someone uh, money that so we just donated. Hey, we'll go on, you see that people here? Uh, we're we're going to send that money there. But one day, like one of the things is like we try to go in the south side and have a fire with somebody. Right? Of someone from another community. Then your kids will say this is the value. Or going giving Eid presents to someone that you really don't know. Right? You know, my, my, uh, my, my, my wife took our kids to a person that was completely blind. And I said, we're going to go and give. And she had two kids. And her husband left her. One bathroom, and the kids just sat there, and they were just like, uh, studio, two bedroom, and they saw another thing. They, you know, things were not even that clean, and, but they were trying to figure out, and they were just happy, just a small present. That is more value than me saying a hadith, I mean, saying the hadith, but then kind of showing them the idea of how much, because now they can finally see it. That's what I'm waiting for, like, you know, when they get old enough to, like, send them there and be like, but now everything's so, like, nicely taken care of. Like, oh, this, I like it. Everyone does the work for you, right? So, but the idea of experiencing and stuff. So, if you want your kids to praise a lot, then at this young age, you need to start that prayer stuff right now. You can't wait until the 13. If you want your child to wear a specific kind of outfit, you want to slowly, slowly build specific kind of uh, things that you want them. If you want them to have good akhlaq, what I see sometimes with boys, like, oh, they're just boys. They're going to act like, you know, they hit each other. And if you don't stop that at 7, 8, 9, then did you see that kid who has that temper when they're 15, 16? Because we never stopped it at 12, 13, 14, 4, 5, 6. Because, oh, they're going to outgrow it. Oh, she's going to outgrow it. She talks all the time to everyone. Don't worry. You have to also parent. We can't just send them to the masjid and say that's the only way. But what we could do is, mashallah, like I heard, like at a school here, you guys, they're, they're starting a school. When you have a foundation where they have every day six to eight hours that they could maybe learn about the faith, that plays a big part. Or if they have the weekend that they have a certain time, but then if you could reinforce it, that changes the game, right? That opportunity that reinforce any concepts and so on and so forth. And that's why even the prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the prophet. Think about this. Why I'm trying to make sure is that even the prophet of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also go through hijrah. And he didn't go this way. He had to go back for two, three days, then go forward two and a half, 200 miles in the sand, hot weather, no shoes for young ones, no uh, drinks, no AC, no Nike shoes to run in, right? Why, watch out for uh, scorpions, all these other factors that could happen. Allah made him go there. What could the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Ya Allah, send Barak, like the whore. Send me, fly me there before everyone comes there. I'm there. They're going to all believe. They're like, how in the world can you come here before everyone else? And you were, we left about two, three weeks ago. That could have been the easiest way because the people of Medina said the Prophet was here six, year, you know, six days before. People would have completely believed. But Allah made the Prophet go through all the battles, through the, uh, 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 the embargo. Allah made all the beloved. If you look throughout the history of the prophets, they went through it. So us as individuals, we will go through these challenges too. And experience is different ways. Just like someone can say Hajj, but until you go to Hajj and you, now you realize, boy, standing in, 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 the, in the bus for six hours to go three miles, how frustrating that is, until you experience it, you can hear all about it, but it's a different ballgame. So that's why it's so important to understand 
These 50 to 80 percent, your child from your akhlaq to the academic world, you have to slowly, whatever things you are. Because if you want a child, like for me, sports is huge. But if you want your child to be good, he can play. But if you want to play, he has to give extra time. If you want a child to read Quran better, you can't just rely on that one hour on Sunday or one, even if it's on a full-time school, without reinforcing certain things, even on a full-time school, to become not average, above average. Right? Just like the sheikh who recites Quran. I don't think he just came one day and said, just started. And that means reading, going over, proper tajweed, akhlaq. Like, I know I have many tajweed mistakes. Right? But it's just trying, if you don't go through it, then you'll, 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 it can mess up. Now, why are we bringing this up, especially the ibadat, the idea of uh, prayers? We focus a lot making sure the salah and so on and so forth. And the young ones, if you can't give five minutes, five times five is 25. 25 minutes in 24 hours is not a lot of time for prayer. But the other aspect of it is, is the challenges. What we've seen in kids when we wrote the book were Amer how you self self-esteem, how people look, especially in this image. The problem with this phone, it's affecting image. Because everyone looks at it and like, oh my God, I wish I could be like that. Parents, if you're giving this phone to your child at second, third, fourth, fifth grade, I guarantee you're going to have problems by middle school, 70%. There is no reason that they need to have a smartphone. We didn't have a smartphone. If they, they, and what do parents say? In case of emergency, give them a flip phone. But what are people going to think? Who cares? If you talk, if you come here every day teaching your theme, then you give them the World Wide Web. Whatever you want to see, whoever you want to talk to, whenever you want to talk to, there is a problem. It is a very big problem that I see at fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Well, also the problem is when your kid can't have attention anymore, is because if you give this to my first, second grade, and they're watching all the reading and everything is just flash, 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 how are they ever going to focus? Like right now, some of these kids are having a, a tough time. Like, man, I got to sit here and watch this, listen to this guy. Because if it's not easy for them, because when everything has to be flash. You even see when teachers, when I deal with teachers, like, man, the kids are, they, you have to keep them, keep them going. If not, they're like, this is boring. Then parents go home. My child said that this class is boring. Well, because, you know, there, there were some times that they had to reflect. Kids like start like panicking now if they can't like have time. And if you don't give them experience where they need to calm themselves down or to have that or making experiences plays a big part. So even at young ages, we have to also start looking at friends and what the kids are friends, what they're watching. Parents, you have to, I, I know this is the first time where both kids and parents are at the same time. Mostly I have you guys separately because I want to give you guys some suggestions. <laughs> but, but one of the things is that you have to, you know, okay, because the kids are here. When your parents ask you about your, you know, about your friends, because they just want to make sure that they're making right decisions. Because at the age of 13 to 18, parents are going to be more like friends, and, you know, like you know, advisors to you. And this is the age when they think they know it best. And that becomes a big, uh, big challenge. So gender relations, you'll see this becomes a challenge. School dances and parties, alcohol, movies and music. And I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you guys an example. Of, of the top 10 music songs like 78 years ago. And then you see some of the songs right now and why they're problematic, right? For the young ones, it's not about music as what the words and the message of some of the top uh, Billboard uh, songs. And so that becomes kind of uh, the challenge that you'll see. So these were ch challenges right now. This, this one right here, just because of the young kids, I'm not going to say the word, but this one right here, if, you're ch if you have a boy or a girl in your, uh, uh, at, at your house, I'm going to tell you four things you need to do. One, first of all, if the, you somehow decide to give them this phone, but take everything of the phone or a laptop or a TV, even at my own house, the TV. My wife has a password, right? And I have a password that, that way, and it says TV7 or TV14. If they want to watch something and it's over 14, they need to get permission. Because all of us go to sleep by 10, 11 o'clock, and our mashallah kids stay until 1 o'clock at night, on Saturday, Sunday, because you're like, okay, and they're downstairs. If you have a child a laptop, and mashallah, you give it to them in their room, and I still think you should have it in the, you know, whether, you know, not in their rooms, but if you do, especially for boys, then you need to put a protection thing on it, so that way, when they type in words, it could go there. Now, this is where I wanted to talk about a few things without the kids here, because I want to give you guys examples, but the problem is if I say it, they're all going to search it. That's the problem here. So, I'm sorry, I thought this was a parent, just a parent rent. <laughs> uh, uh, um, thing. So the Christian right groups have done a phenomenal job protecting us from this. There were certain words that kids would type up, which it might be, man, I got to give you these examples, but I don't want to do this. 
that are so close to like a specific cartoon. And if a kid types it wrong, it goes to a website that they should not go to. That's the problem. If your kid has email addresses, you need to make sure they have Gmail and not Hotmail, not Bing, not even Yahoo. I think Gmail does a better job that people can just have junk things because what happens in emails, a lot of times when you have like social media, they'll have a friend. What they do is the first click would be okay. The second time after, they're like, okay, that's up to them. And they'd be like, hey, hey, would you like to be friends, blah, blah, and so on and so forth. Those become the problems with social media. Right now, 68% of 11-year-old kids in America have seen the last, that last word I'm talking about. Right? Now, Family Youth uh, Initiative, they did a survey of 500 people uh, around a, a certain state, and they realized that in the boys, about 60% have seen things that they shouldn't have by the age of 12, 13. Right? Girls, 30%. So it's not also boys and girls. So the idea of not saying, because this world, that, that, and one of the biggest things about why this is things, the Snapchats and Facebook, I'm, again, I'm not saying haram, I'm saying you have to watch and be aware. Like even, I know my daughter has it, I'm like, hey, I'm like, Aish, you need to at least monitor it. I love protect them. I mean, I don't have, have that. But at least the son, I'm like, <laughs> you don't have anything, right? I'm gonna wait until that, that happens. But those are certain things that we have to realize are going to be challenging. And the social media, these are kind of things that when we have issues, when kids want to talk about how do we deal with this, we have to have proper answers for them. I would highly recommend we have a separate one just with the kids, because then you're going to have like open air. Here it's not going to be easy for kids to bring up what their challenges are. But I want you guys to realize all of us will have different challenges. Some of us will not be, won't be alcohol. Some might be drugs. Some might be opposite gender. Some might be same gender issues. We are seeing different things, but you have to each one respond in proper ways. When we talked about what the top seven, when we did the research, again, this is a few years ago, we're doing another one, we're rewriting the book. When we did this, we looked at number one, this, this has become the biggest issue. Up there, like, okay, how do we deal with it? How to answer that? So gender relations. So when you have your child say, we have to make sure kids don't understand that it's okay to have feelings, like even opposite gender. But we have to tell them, a lot talks about rule, rules. Well, when we, when we grew up, it would be like, how dare you even think that you like someone from the opposite side? Then you're like, okay, then I must be really corrupt haram kid because I don't know, I have feelings. Right? We all act like we don't, my, all, I mean, okay, you have the mashallah like people, but a lot of people I grew up with might have had bad feelings of the opposite gender at high school. Until, but the idea is like, well, this is the rules. But when we say, how dare you think this, this can't be, you shouldn't be, or you're thinking this is haram, that's when people are like, well, then what's wrong with me? Right? And that's why it's so important that when you answer and say, no, the dean knows about it. That's why Allah has now put requirements so you know how to deal with it in the proper way and why Allah has rules. So just like alcohol, the idea is that, hey, when you're drinking, you're intoxicated, you can't think correctly, and you will do something against Allah's you know, uh, commandments. Oh, I see. Right? Then we're just saying, everything about this country is wrong. Then you're like, well, I like some stuff about this country. Things start on time in this country, right? There's good in there stuff, right? There's always going to be good and bad in everything. The devil personality, this was the one that shocked us. Kids said, if my parents ever knew what I was really thinking, so it's better to me at home be like, mashallah, G, G, G. Right? Especially they know pack what we do. <laughs> like, you know, but the idea was that well, that surprised us, that kids were like, I'd rather just be different lives and play it off because if I told them what I'm going through, they might just, back then it was, send me back home, right? And even back home doesn't mean everything's taken care of, but that was one of the things that you see. Identity crisis, confidence, self-esteem, especially for girls, self-esteem, I'm telling moms, at a young age, get them in some form of athletic movement. I'm not saying they have to be team, but if you don't have good habits right now, healthy habits, eating, exercising, it will catch up. We, research shows, Serotonin levels of people who exercise, when they go through sometimes, and they might have a lot of protection, you know, depression could happen, which is coming up quite a bit in our community. Sometimes it's hereditary, a lot of protected genetics, but sometimes it's due to, um, because of trauma. Sometimes it's just due to some situation they're going through, self-esteem, body issues. So a lot of protect our boys and girls, and all of us as adults, because I'll go through it. This is, and when someone does go through depression, please don't always just say it's a lack of iman. It is not. There are people who I know, very righteous people, 
who some ha or go through struggles. Everyone will go through it. Everyone might know how to deal with it, and that's where faith comes into place. How do we deal with the situation? And we have to have that. Substance abuse, this is the other one, religion and culture extremism. The other one that kind of had was that kids, you have people now, you know, I, I had a certain time to be on the advisory board for Homeland Security. And when they had certain individuals, or even any kid that has been caught, you know, with doing something maybe uh, wrong, all their information has been connected to a website. Hamlet's never been connected to this masjid taught this, or this Islamic studies teacher taught this. So we have to also make sure that we also, on the other side, where you're not people practicing the faith, right? So you got the one side, but the other side of people trying, you know, confusing kids by going to another whole level of saying, hey, this is what the faith is, right? And so you got to making sure that takes, uh, have that. This next slide, it was, uh, they did uh, under 400 college students. So it's not too many, but gives you an idea of percentages on this really quick. Uh, how many, when they did these 400 kids, Family Youth Institute, this is how many people use marijuana, gambling, tobacco, alcohol. Just to kind of give you an idea, right? Um, I'm just not going to read all of it, just for young kids. Just, just so, but just kind of give you an idea on certain things. So, so challenges, even in high school, college, are very important. The other ones for all you young ones who are thinking about going to hookah bars, like, you know, to the, the, the thing. I, even though I'm not talking about halal haram here. Here's the problem. When you're there and everyone's smoking, that's why they banned smoking about 20 years ago, because secondhand, secondhand smoking of all the bartenders. Many of the bartenders and waitresses were getting cancer more than the people because they're smoking the, everybody's. One hour of hookah smoking is equal to inhaling 200 cigarettes just because you're all over, right? And you got to realize that some of these effects in the next 15, 20 years, just like how vaping in four years they'll start catching people, like how many people's uh, lungs are, that's why you need to make sure. Then you see what get, kids, what motivates smoking, have a good time with friends. So you know when I'm talking about friends? Perceive less harmless than cigarettes, like okay, at least it's a lesser issue. Right? Uh, to relax, to celebrate, try to do something new. So you'll see individuals will try stuff. That's why this idea of core of your friends and all these play a big part. Now, okay, I know there's, okay, so video games. When I show you video games, Grand Theft Auto, rated M, right? And certain these games. Parents, when you see rated M, does not mean Muslim, does not mean mashallah, Mubarak for buying your kids something, I need. I want you to realize, your parent, moms, especially moms, see this Grand Theft Auto was the number one game a few years ago. Now it's another one, because now you can buy things online. But back when you had to buy a, a video game, the problem with this, it has five different versions. It has Las Vegas series, it has South Beach, Atlantic series, just by telling you what these areas are. In this game, language use, anything that an adult does, it, you could do in the game. Like it could show, and the kids play it. When I go and speak to kids separately, and I ask them how many, you know, before I bring the slide up, I just ask, how many guys, Grand Theft, you get about 40% of kids raise their hand, like, yeah, I played it once or twice. Now the problem is, even if you go out, kids on YouTube, they don't watch it, they can look it up. That's why on YouTube and all these uh, computers, you have to put a blockage. On your phone, you have a thing called screen time, and you can put blockage for TV7, everything, because if you type in something, even on YouTube, what they do is the kids make videos of it, and they post it. So you can have a post of even like a nice cartoon. If you don't watch it, sometimes people do voiceovers and they make vulgar comments on it. That's why as parents, you have to be a little bit more aware of that. When we grew up, there was not even like 10, 15 games. But you'll see that a lot of things got a war. Now why is this for young ones? You might think like, why am, I, why am I bringing this up? Right now, the military uses Call of Duty to train their things because the game has actual roads of countries now. The newer versions. So when they go, they could have individuals learn how to navigate through. And in some of these things, when you go there, there are people dressed in religious outfits when you go attack that country, right, and, and some of that. So you're desensitizing people from killing other people of other colors, other races, other faiths. And those are things that come a concern when you say when people, you get more and more. One of the big things of Iblis is it's not going to just tell us, but it could slowly kind of get us in various ways. All right. Now, the other one was the music songs, which the slide has the top eight songs. And when we deal with kids, it sh shows them, it shows you how, how wrong just the song is, because the videos from these are so un-Islamic, right? And uh, Sheikh, you got to tell me if I could switch it or not. Uh, 
Should we switch it? Okay, oh yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm gonna skip it. Uh, okay, so one of the things that, the other thing I want, I want us to uh, keep in mind is there, the reason why I'm bringing this up, and I, I'm gonna get to like solutions here for a second, is screen time right now in North America, right? Sorry, I have like a whole three, four hour on this, right? So I'm, I'm trying to give you like the major things here. Six hours a day. Background, right, you know, two hours. So that means six hours a day they're walking, but sometimes the background is still there, like some song, something's on their a radio, a phone. 70% of what, when they screen time is violence that they might see. 68% pornography are forms of. Think about it, what they might think is there. So those become kind of major things. Uh, one in five solicit by the web. Right, moral values, right? The risk is that there's a social interaction. You have kids who have more friends online than they have real. And you have this dopamine, when they make a picture and everyone likes it, they get a dopamine that they like this much. Oh, like this is awesome, right? So in social media, they're always looking at what people think of them, how are other people, and then they think like, oh my God, the people have more than us. And that becomes problematic. Then you have advertising situations, right? The other thing with video games is that obesity has increased. Because if you're sitting there, and for five, six hours, you could see, I've seen this even in my own relatives and families and cousins, that when we went out, we would come back by Maghrib. Now kids are like, go, go outside and play. Why are, you, why are you making us play? Like, we're fine where we are online. So that becomes another big issue, too. Poor sleep quality you're seeing in kids. So those are kind of challenges that you will see that, that plays a big part, right? So implementing certain things. Parent control apps. The use of internet right now is three to five year olds is 41%, which is scary. 6 to 11 years old, 57%. 12 to 17 year olds, 71%. When parents and people are saying, why is there more, I, in my mind, ADHD, why is there more uh, self-esteem issues, why is there more anxiety, why is there more uh, 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 depression? Again, other factors play a part, but what's the only thing that's changed in the last 20, 30 years? It's technology. That has influx. The kids are, you know, we're the same kind of, Allah's created, you know, all the same types. It's just now the environment has. So you'll see that the percentage of what it is plays a big part. So that by itself is why we want to make sure it kind of plays a part. Now the other things why is that kids under six, two hours of TV online. And why I bring this up is that even shows, if it just says Disney, does not mean anything. Disney's, Disney's view might be different than our view. You have, to be making, you have to make sure that when you have Disney Channel now at 5 or 4 o'clock afterwards, you have to make sure like what that show is. That show might have now same gender topics or opposite gender topics or some areas that our kids might not be able to understand. So that becomes a thing. This one, Family Guy, which I've seen parents sometimes watch, it's not Family Guy. That's an adult show for family themes. So it's really Haram Guy for that, right? So when you see that on Fox News, have that. Cartoon Network. A lot of times, after 9 o'clock, Cartoon Network is called Adult Swim. It has animation, which could be questionable. Some of the stuff is not there. But if you don't put a password on it, and you're like, my child's watching Cartoon Network. I'm going to sleep. And you just let that child stay up to 9, 11, 11 o'clock. You know, I'm talking about 9, 10, 13, 14 years old. Those are problematic. That's why that idea of protection plays a big part in, 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 in kind of going through, right? Other challenges you'll see is that kids go through uh, certain things. Um, one, one of the things that I, I, we have to make sure is if we want our kids to, especially on akhlaq, one of the things, I'm just going to bring a few things, I'm going to keep it in Q&A. And then if you have more, no questions, I'll, I'll, I'll finish up more. We have, if one of the things I realized, one is what we do as families is we make sure, hey, did you pray, did you pray? Which is good. We have to do that. We got to get that opportunity. But if you want them to understand and be involved in the community, because you say, if I could protect them, what's different was when we grew up maybe 20, 30 years ago, that challenge would be that lion in the cage. This society, we're in the jungle. Everything's already out. There's no more kind of protection, this and that. So that's why we have to make sure. If you have a TV, how do you block it off? How do you limit? If that means I'm a big, I, I'm, I tell parents, if you're going to watch something, then make sure it's Netflix. At least you could turn it on, watch it, turn it off. No commercials, no situation. That's more streaming is much better than just saying, young man, because everyone's got satellite TV, so you have 
400 channels to go through, and no one has the time, so that becomes there. But the idea is you want to make sure for kids to see volunteer affection. This is society. I understand. We have to take time with our kids. Preschool, pre-K, kindergarten, we have to talk to our kids. We have to. Fathers, if you have daughters, the last, you need to tell them how, much, how nice you look. You need to talk to them. You need to go out and have dinner with them. Because the last thing you want to do is the only person that ever said that she looks nice and uh, pretty is some guy on, webs uh, on the internet or some guy on the street is like, you know what? You're, I think you're a beautiful girl. It's like, oh, my God. And girls, if you're here, you need to be very careful, and boys, careful how much information you give online. Right? One of the big things when I work with Cook County Sheriff Department, so, you know, these, these uh, individuals that come, like, you know, kidnapping is no more this way. It's online. Trafficking, like, you know, the blank trafficking, right, that human trafficking that's happening, this is going through online. And what do they do? They trick individuals. And when you give so much information, my favorite color is this, my favorite food is this, or you put all your favorite musician's information, and that person contacts you, they know everything about you. Oh, my God, you like the same color as I do? Me too. Save your favorite color, food, save favorite musician. You have to be careful how much information that you're giving to there. Even as adults, when I went to the, the, the Cook she uh, County Sheriff, they said, please see your Facebook post of your, uh, your friends as a criminal. We're all in Disney, Disneyland right now. cha chas and everyone's here. Look, we're all here. And, and no one's at, you know, and we're all here as a family. It's a Khandan party. Oh, no one's at your house right now. All right? We're all here. You're giving so much information. Then also, you're like, this is so-and-so's kid. And this is his favorite color. And this is his favorite food. Because now, if someone, even because, may Allah protect us, 70% of child abuse happens to someone in the family, one of their relatives like taking advantage of. Again, I'm going to say this again, which I've dealt with in the community, is 70% of people I've even dealt with has where, where kids, like a girl says, hey, something happened, is someone in the family. I'm going to tell you right now, when you have a party, you, you, four or five things here. I'm, I'm, I know I'm bringing out stuff that's uncomfortable. When you have a party, you need to make sure that you don't just have like, okay, uh, 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 ups, you know, um, first with kids, 16-year-old kids should not be hanging out with the five, six-year-old kids if they have all phones. Because I've seen so many times where kids are like, where did you see this? Oh, you know what? Oh, I was at this thing, and this one, they, I walked in, and they, they were doing something. They said, don't say anything. I'll show you. Right? Or they have that. Or you might have sometimes where if someone's staying, you know, that, you know, one of my kids, I was like, can we sleep over? I'm like, sorry. You can't sleep over unless it's a close family that we know. Because you never know what could situations happen. And if you bring habits now until then at a certain age, you can say, okay, but we have to slowly start developing, talking to kids about what, what's their space and these certain things because when things happen, it could psychologically affect them for a, a long time. So this is something that we have to make sure. And if we're, kids are watching things at an early age, their brains are not knowing how to deal with it, and you're seeing some of the effects of all this uh, adult things that kids are watching in marriages now. If you speak to imams and some of the marriage stuff, because now people are assuming things that what they're seeing on TV is not reality. Right? And so you'll see how that. Affection, you need to make sure. Struggles, exercising. I, I'm, I'm a big believer. I think we, this is something that as communities and what we're seeing with mental uh, concerns that need to happen. Even how to budget and saying, even if mashallah, you're doing well. But the kids would be like, oh, I want to buy you everything because we didn't have it. We want to give them everything. That's a problem because how, it's going to be light, hard. If they don't have the financial means to keep up with the how you, maybe you were a doctor and they weren't, how are they going to do this? Or when they marry someone, they're like, well, well this, this, this is not. We used to fly out every month, two months. So you're going to have to learn them how to be creativity. Accept criticism. This is something at a young part that we have to tell them, hey, you know what? We are trying to give you. But at the same time, as parents, we got to make sure we're not comparing with them to other kids. You know, we're like, well, you could be like this person. You could say, hey, look, we're, we're, you know, we like you, but this is some areas that we want you to do better. These become uh, certain kind of things to do. And practicing faith, even at a young age, you could get kids to be very involved. Suppose they lose something. Say, Mom, I can't find it. So what we used to do is say, hey, why don't we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help find it? I might even know where it is. But the idea is making connection that Allah can help you. Is right, and then they find it and say, it's there. Hey, I did well in the school. Great job. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank your parents for it. And, and thank yourself for doing a great job. Those become a, a big thing. Right? How, how, you, how youth learn, it tells them they need to feel okay emotionally and physically. They need to be interested. They need to own the information you'll see that these are bigger things. They need a coach or mentor. 
There's going to be a time. I deal with youth all the time. But I know with my own kids, I have to have someone else talk to them because I'm Baba. Right? It's just like husband and wife stuff. Right? You know when you tell your wife something and like, huh? And then the husband says something, but that third person says it like, what a great idea. I said the same thing. But you said it in a different way. Right? It happens all the time, right? Where you could have someone, a third person says that, but it's not going to work. So even with your own kids, there is a certain time, especially at 12 to 13, 15, that you might need someone else that you could talk to that would talk to them to deal with the situation. Especially when you start realizing their attitude's changing, their behavior's changing, you're going to. And there are going to be challenges like that. And say, how do we deal with it? And then looking at certain times, there are going to be certain things and not get frustrated. Right? What we have and say, well, this has happened. How can this happen? Plays a big part. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to stop here. Any questions that people have? Because there is a. Any QA? If not. We're going to take questions now. Now is your opportunity to benefit from what you have heard or. The question should be related to what we talked about. Make sure that it is a question, not a, con not a lecture. So make sure to keep your comment or question short. Please raise your hand and we'll bring the mic to you so everyone can benefit from your question. Sure. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. In your opinion, when is a good age to give a child a smartphone then? Um, okay. I think if, if you have to, a high school a baby might be the minimum, sorry. You know, prefer if you could push it back. But I realize by high school is everyone, and a lot of times schools or assignments and everything's on email. But I think before 14, we're, we're, you're, even at 14 to 18 is also tough times, right? Because that's also the kids' biggest level. But having at second, third, fourth grade, because when, I, when you have them here, it's just human nature. The more you're exposed to, you want more, more satisfaction, right? And that's why they've even seen that how things go into extremes. So I would, I would say not until even high school, if you could push it off there. If that means if a flip phone and they get an iPad or a laptop where they can still contact, that'd be great. I mean, even for me and my own daughters, that they had them at high school, right? You know, but so I, you know, but I've seen some people who re were able to even push it longer. But my thing is, when you do get it, they need to like you know, you got we as parents have a right to be like, I need to know where your location is. I need to. I have a password. I put it on. So I, what we did is we took the phone, put the all the uh, the parameters on it. And you have, you're able to put a password because you says a parent because it's under your phone. And I plopped plop, plop it so that way when they have it, they can still put their password for this phone, but they can't change any of their uh, parameters of their phone unless I or, or the mom changes it. I think it will be huge to do. Same, same thing with the laptop, boy or girl, that, 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 that for sure. We can take questions from the sister's side as well. If you have one, we can, you can raise your hand and the sister will bring the mic to you. Any questions? We can take turns. If any questions from the sister side, if not, we have another one on this side. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair for the excellent uh, program. I have this uh, question. See, we send kid to the Islamic school, and you decide to put your son to do his program, and you are sending your son to a masjid. A mother, sir. Yes. And uh, your son is coming from the Islamic environment, Islamic school, and he's going to the mother, sir. And there, he is interacting with the students who are coming from the public school culture. Now, this person who went to Islamic school and come to do hifs and is interacting with the kids who have come from the public school, the challenges that parents face to handle this. How do we handle this? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that that's why even, it, it, it's, it's, it's a two-part thing, because sometimes when you come into, like, a community setting, everyone comes with different baggages, right? And then that's why we have to realize, when people, I feel like sometimes, you know, not, not to you, but in, in general what happens is people say, I send my child to a Sunday school, and they, someone taught them this. I said, guess what? But what we realize that I don't want Shaitan to justify that to where we completely pull kids out. But what we have to do is where we have administration. But then there are sometimes who kids their first time coming because they're trying to get out of what they know. And that becomes a tough part. And that's why I always tell parents and say, look, uh, school, any area that's going to teach you foundational stuff to get you going, but you're going to have to reinforce it through everything. 
That's why when you see kids who like, I said, there's so many parents I've seen when they send them to Islamic school or weekend school, mother stop, but when the kid comes home, the parents are not reading the Quran. He's like, my father doesn't read it, so why am I reading it? Then it becomes a homework. Same thing academically, you say you have that, but no one prays home at Salah, right? We have this, but mom, you know what? You say be nice, but my dad always yells at us. Yells at us. Right? Those become situations. I'll give you my own personal experience. Of, is this being taped? Like, it is? Okay, yeah, then I can't take that because I, I literally could. Take it back. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, all right. That, you know, I, I completely forgot about some of the stuff I said. All right. Before we post stuff, I've got to read through, watch everything one more time. <laughs> all right. But <laughs> subhanAllah. Uh, oh, yeah, I take that back. Uh, but I've <laughs> can't even use it now. All right, okay, go back. But the idea of I've seen people, which this is true too, is that where their experience also could become situational, or a problem at an experience like a Quran or mother stuff. What, what I realized is when someone goes through something is to clarify that is not right. Like, for example, if my, I remember my mom and said, if your dad gets mad, if he has that, we have, and our parents were good, there's some goods and there's bads. But what we have to do is, and A, if you see something bad in this, make sure you learn from it. And one of the big things my mom at least did is that she never justified if something was not right. right? And that becomes things. What we sometimes do is like, oh, that's just a high side, that's what happens. No, if something's wrong, we say that religiously you should not be hit. Right? And that becomes, even when I went through an experience where I saw it at a mother's house, I was like, whoa. But that never hit me. So it's hard for me to understand that. And I was like, man, these are supposed to be the ulama of the ulama. How can they, you know, maybe put their hand on something. That was hard. That was something that I had to kind of look at from a different perspective. But we have to learn and say, think. I'll give you an example of my own son. When he was six years old, he was biting his nail. And his, and his, and my, um, uh, and his, uh, mom's, uh, his, uh, his mom told him, hey, stop biting your nails. Now, six years old, he goes, well, Baba does it. Now, I'm like, what do you, you know, <laughs> get mad at him. Or I accept it, say, you know what? Yes, I do still bite my nails, and your daddy used to tell me to stop biting my nails, and the problem was I had that bad habit, and your mom's trying to tell you not to do it so you don't have the bad habit of baba. I have to admit that. If I say, hey, got some more Like, how dare you, like, question me, right? Because what we've realized, we've justified just bad things. There's beauty in our culture, in our religious culture, but we've let stuff go, anger, yelling. One of the things that bothered me at much is, like, why are we arguing all the time? Because I realized back home it was authoritarian. If anyone tells you to do it, you just do it. Whoever yells the most wins. Right? And how many people you have behind you? Right? That's something about this country is great. You, there, there's the idea of conflict. You know, when you play sports, you figure things out. So there's things that we have to realize. But if you say that's just the way it is, that's problematic. When I go overseas and say, look, you just got to give them, slip them something, then things get done. At least you could say it's not right, but that's the way things get done. Okay. But it's not, you know, religiously okay, but that's how things work. That, that place, that kind of changes it. So I, I think uh, for, the, for the brother, we have to, that's why parents are going to have to do that. If it is something to a point that if that child is affecting so many, then we have to, administration or something has to make that move. But we have to realize that is, that's the beauty of our deen is that our massages are not like membership based, right? Anyone can come in, anyone can listen, but at the same time we're going to, that's why we always have to debrief with our kids and say, what did you learn? And you saw someone doing that, you know what? Let's give that child, kid a benefit of doubt. He may be someone new, he maybe didn't know. Now he's going to learn about the deen and come there. We used to have this in our majid where sometimes the kids would come with shorts, they would play, and the amu would just be like, How dare, what's, look at this kid coming with shorts. And I said, He's here. At least he's praying. Next time we'll give him a suggestion. Just don't yell at him, you know, tell me, Hey, young man, just, next time, just, you know, this will be better because sometimes it might roll up. Uncle's right next to you. He's not going to feel comfortable that you're praying right next to him. You know, give and take, right? And those certain things that we have to kind of make sure. And even like, you know, for example, like, you, you, you know, uh, uh, you know my, my daughter, you know, she, she, she went to Islamic school, but after eighth grade, she asked me, she said, hey, Baba, if I don't wear a scarf, are you going to be mad at me? She said, can I ask you this question? If I don't wear a scarf, would you be mad at me? I asked her, can I ask you a question? So I said, do you think it's a commandment of Allah? She said, yes. I said, okay, you think it's a commandment of Allah? That, 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 that's perfect. As, as long, because I have to I say, you know, you decide when that time is. Why? Because I, I have to be honest with myself that her mother started when she was in college. Her mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, her grandmother started only uh, like nine years ago. She, I have to be honest that my sister started when she was in college because she might have seen pictures or conversations. 
She might see her and where is it? So I said, look, as you know, it's a commandable line. When that time comes, what's the law? There's no, there's no uh, ifs and buts. Uh, boy, boy, girl, you know, situation, there's no, nothing that happening, right? You have to say, okay, but I need to wear this or have that. Those thoughts and t conversations, because I'd rather you talk to me than say, I don't know, I'm going to say at, home, at school, just take it out. Like, just have those conversations. But what we've had is that when someone's like, how dare you even question this, that becomes problems. So that's why it's better to let them say what they have to say, and then we could deal with it, than just be like, too scared. And then that double personality where kids will just world two different worlds and having those conversations and when those challenges happen. Thank you so much. Any uh, other questions? Any other question? Maybe from the sister's side. If you raise your hand, we will bring the microphone to you. The sister will bring it to you. Any questions? If not, I'm just going to give We have another question here. Yeah, we also have, we're streaming this. So oh, okay. uh, we have a question uh, from online viewer sure. as well. And I'll just read the question. The question is with the emerging of virtual reality meta, how can we as Muslim educators be steps ahead and start to educate ourselves and our kids about this dangerous new world? Yeah, the virtual world, that's why I was trying to show you that video games, you know, you know to show you that we have to, the vi you know, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's another, you know what's crazy is that there, there, there's a kid, there's a, there's a whole program called Second, Second City of Second World, I forgot what it's called. But what they do is you can log in, pay money, and you have an avatar where you can do everything in life. Anything you can, and there are more than millions of people subscribed to this, where they live another world because they could be like, hey, this, this is the world I could do everything else maybe I couldn't do. The other part is that as parents, you just could do your part, right? You have to say, what, everything that you have in your technology, you have to look over it. The video games you watch, that means I had to sit down and watch cartoons and movies. You know, you know Cinderella, the first time I saw it? Yeah, I, I, here's another personal thing. Experience happened. My daughter is 16 now. I may do all love, protect her, and keep her righteous. I mean, but, uh, but I remember the age of four, four, six years old, we went to get a doll. And she was getting a doll, and she picked, and she was looking, right? So, uh, and she was picking a doll, and then she picked like this one doll. It was lighter, right? And so it was the darkest skin doll. So I said, what about this one? She said, yeah, but this is prettier, right? This is pretty, you know, like, you know. And I was like, and I looked at it because she goes, look, Cinderella, Snow White, all of them are, and I was like, this seven, she was six, seven years old, and that's that time she watched. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to watch these with me, her, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to this. But what you start realizing is that even at a young age, watching something, slowly brings in your own view of what beauty is, right? Even at that, even when they've done, they've done that even with, in the 1960s with African-American kids and say, which one's a better, better doll, right? Which one do you pick? And they realize that when we could, ourselves, what we say, what we talk about plays a big part. So that's why when they, when I remember they finally had Tatiana came out, I'm like, we're going to go watch that together, right? Because she was like a, 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 a black princess, right? Because I wanted to let her see both. And I said, look, you know, Baba's this color, but you know, why, you know, but you realize, be proud of who you are. So those things that even at a young age, what they see, what they hear, slowly is part of it. And we see this in our own culture too. Why is one of the biggest things that fair and lovely, like the lotion that in some third world countries, or you see a lot of the weddings where everyone's like, you know, put up. Even it was funny, my, my mom, on the wedding, she, just, she put powder on me. I was like, why are you putting powder on me? She already knows how I look, <laughs> right? Right, right, because it's the idea. I'm like, why are you like, Powder? Like, really? Like, right? But I'm like, okay, if that makes you happy with me, I'm going to do with you. <laughs> but, but you start realizing how, you know, at that time or whatever it is. So Allah, Allah protect us. So, you know, uh, I think you, we have to be very cognizant, be aware, read on articles. What, what's out there is very important. Family Youth Institute is really good. It has a lot of information uh, on that. And also, I'll send the Sheikh on like a website. We're going to be having a lot of small videos. But we've done it. It's hard for me to travel a lot. So we're making these five, five minute videos on various topics. Uh, whereas anytime online they can watch. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sheikh, for the excellent talk. Uh, what do you think, what is the role of uh, peer pressure in driving these issues that our youth are facing? Well, let me give an example of that of myself. So my son is eight year old mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes I set him for play date, you know, to play with his friends. 
Uh, at one time, he came back home and he told me that no, no one was playing with me and they ignored me. And I asked him, what, why is that so? He said, because I didn't know that game that they were playing. Yeah. So because of that preparation, I had to buy him a Nintendo so that he could m mix up with his friend. Right. You know, and I think, in my opinion, that is a major issue. That is a major driving factor that rooted or that actually caused these uh, you know, issues that we are facing again as a woman. Uh, especially, you know, when you are an immigrant, you don't have an extended family here, you know, so, so you are under more pressure in that thing. So what do you think about that? Yeah, Thank you. Look, there's going to be peer pressure all the time at every stage. So you have kids, that, hey, I, this person had this video game, some didn't have this video game, and that's going to happen. If suppose at a certain time you say, okay, you want to look at it, there are going to be certain things that, you know, like, you know, I'll give you an example. We finally had a video game like my daughter's never had until, I think, COVID. My wife even said, hey, you know, why do we get him a video set? Because he's, you know, where is he going to get to go? Man, I was like, I finally let in, right? Then I realized, this kid's out there for two, three hours, right? Everything I told him, you know, about, you know, I talked to other people about. He's like in sixth grade, right? And so now we had to kind of slowly put, like, timing. But there's going to be a peer pressure. We have to tell kids, like, look, when the situation, what's awesome is he told you. Right, and say, look, this is where it is. And you can say, hey, I know this is there. Like one time, you know, kids are like, hey, Baba, they're doing something, so I didn't go there. I'm like, hey, you know what? That's great. You don't want to snitch on them, which is good. Hey, just keep that in mind. You make a better decision. I'm proud of you. And there are certain things you're going to have, just like phones. There's like, everyone has a phone. My mom, my daughter's, everyone has a phone except you. I'm like, and that's, that's okay. Hey, but you get to travel, uh, you play sports, or uh, we go here. You have to sometimes give them other options. They look, well, you get you, your opportunity. Everyone has something you could do, some people can't do. So I think that's going to be there, and there's going to be give and take. Some things are going to, but you have to do is that, can that be critical? For me, I stuck that, hey, these phones cannot be at the house until I, then I realized I have to. Even when people came over my house, I would be like, if someone brought them, like, hey, I apologize, but can you leave this on the main table here? And you guys could go upstairs and play, but you can't keep the phone if you're coming to the house to visit. And some parents are like, I'm like, I want them to hang out and fun, and I don't want them to be like, you know, let me see stuff. And so sometimes having those, now most people have that respect and they understood, but then we just have to, I realize with my kids, that means we have to hang out with them. Cannon board, uh, I know like fathers, we don't want to, but if you want our kids, right, at the end, when we pass away, there are three ways we're going to benefit. One of them, righteous offsprings that make dua for us. So we should make sure that our kids, I want to make sure they, and we pray once a lot together. One thing I'm going to tell you guys, and here's a few things I want to just guys, I said teachers, but this is also for kids is that we have to make sure there's certain things that we have to make that relationship. Just like how he was enough to talk to you about it, is that even Mark of Salah, even if all you go to Salah, but one Salah together, if we could pray together, make dua together. So what we do is you finish up Salah, we do Tasbib, then you say, look, man, you make dua, Seba make dua, Rayyan make dua, Ma make dua, Baba makes dua, and then you have one Hadith per day. Just even for 10, 15 minutes, and that's all Allah wants, 15 minutes. Right? Morning dua, we have asbahna, a few things. Seven minutes in the car. That's it. That's how long. Then kids are like, wait a minute. Do you remember a young one? You know when you walk out of the house and you step with your uh, left foot? You say bismillah to walk a lot, you get hasana. You, 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 uh, you just say bismillah before you eat, you get good deeds. You put on your right clothes. Then you start realizing to kids like, wait a minute, small things. These are all, I'm like, this is worshiping. Worshiping, being nice, not, when you're playing basketball, I tell my son, if you don't swear, you get good deeds. When, you, when Allah knows you could have said something, but you didn't, you, when you could have put someone because they pushed you, you don't, Allah will reward you. So I was saying, when we start telling kids that just your daily life is good deeds, that Allah wants us to get into Jannah, not punish us, plays a big part. Then they start saying, you know when that kid that won that video game and you didn't do that and you didn't want to go there? Allah rewards you. And now that you're getting into the game, but now, now you got that responsibility, right? But you're, not, you're going to be accountable for it. And I think those are certain things. The other thing I just want to make sure, a question, question? Yeah. Yeah, we have one more question. Before we go to the question, it's 8 o'clock. Inshallah, we're going to have Isha at 8.15. Yeah. Okay. So we have about 10 minutes. We're going to give you five minutes for wudu and all that. So we'll wrap up in 10 minutes. Anyone has any other questions before we move on to the next one? I know we have one here. Sure, yeah, go ahead. You want to take that one? Any questions from the sister side before we move to the brothers? At least one question. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Zakallah khair, Dr. Habib, for this wonderful seminar. Uh, this is more of a request than, than a question. Uh, uh, I would really um, like to have you more often here, and I would, I would love to request the masjid uh, uh, board to, to have you more often here, inshallah, because this is not enough. This is a huge subject. 
I think if you just go over one item, in, you know, from your, uh, you know, uh, PowerPoints, we'll be here for two, three hours. So uh, I would love you to come here, inshallah, more often. Have us as parents alone, maybe, uh, you know, uh, kids alone, and go into details because we really need to know how to balance raising a kid in America um, with a uh, great personality, Muslim identity, while not making it, you know, um, you know how it is, memnu' is marghub. When you make everything haram, 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 don't do this, don't do that, that's exactly what you want to do. So inshallah, we want to learn from you more. We want to, we want to see more advanced um, settings, inshallah. And I, I urge uh, Brother Ibrahim and Sheikh Ibrahim and, and everyone in the board to have you, inshallah, more often. Jazakumullah khair. So one of the things I just wanted to kind of have that, I don't you know what teachers could do, but this is also for parents. One of the big things regarding with kids is that having positive communications, you know, take away the top part, but I just want to, I just, this popped in my head, is talking to your kids daily. And, to, you know, so one of the big things that we've lost, and I, I, it's a problem in our own house too sometimes, is eating together. Like when I remember when I was young, it's like, get back by Maghrib, and then Maghrib, we're going to, after Maghrib, we eat dinner, and everyone has to sit there and, and one of the things that if we even sit down together is to ask kids how they're doing. So that means like sometimes we go, how's your day? Okay. You always say, okay, what's your problem? Why not start off and say, you know, I start off and say, this is how my day went today. And guess what? Then you ask your wife, how's her, your day? First, the kids are going to look at you like, oh my God, dad talks to mom. That's going to be a surprise. <laughs> then, then the second part's going to be, then they're going to share because now you're sharing. And so it becomes very in, important. And when you don't want to only communicate to your kids when they're, how's your homework, clean, clean their garbage, stop, talk, you know, stop talking back to your uh, brothers and si siblings, why are you not listening to your parents, or the biggest one, how's your grades, right? You got to talk about other conversations. So when you have conversations, it plays a big part. So the other catch is that when we do talk to kids, what do we do? Is not to compare. We always like, well, if so-and-so kid was like this. Because sometimes you don't know the other kid's situation. A lot of times when a kid's are like, oh, you don't know this kid at other place. Just like you don't want a kid to be like, well, you know, so-and-so's parents do this. Your parent, you know, why would you do this, right? You don't like that. So you got to make sure that we got to be careful how we compare so it doesn't become problematic. We got to praise them when there's something good. We got to, you know, especially when they're young, we praise a lot. But when they come to middle school, we're always like, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. So just saying, mashallah, you're looking good. Hey, keep up the good work. I'm really proud of your grades. When we see the grades, we're like, A, A, A. Why the B? B is bad. But the me's, right, right? Right? But you want to make sure is that if you have that, because sometimes we just get stuck on that negative, where we want to be tough, but we have to be sure that we also giving kids uh, individual uh, positive things. Praising when they're doing something good. And that communication, now I want you to realize how important communication up to husband and wife. Why I bring this up? Because some people are like, oh, our culture, this idea of husband and wife, or, you know, these kids look at it like, oh my God, so nice, the romance, and this and that. I always tell kids, especially the girls that pay attention, you know, and, and there. Think about when the what he happened. I'm going to end with this. When the revelation happened, the two major things in, 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 in our Sierra changed the world. Revelation happens, changed the world. Where did the Prophet Sassam go? He went to his wife, Khadija Allah Anha. And when the Prophet died, it changed our whole lives. All of us make dua to pray in, in sujood, in hajj, in umrah, in tawaf, as fasting on the 27th night that we would die. Allah decides that the beloved of Allah is going to die in the in the in the in the lap uh, in, the, uh, in the shoulders of Aisha Allah. Why I bring this up is that sometimes our kids also have this thing that we don't like in, the, in our culture that this idea of our relationship, because when we don't see it, then they see all this other thing. They think this is phenomenal. That's why as families to do stuff together, hang out together, go to a game together, or go shopping together, or eat together. And when we're eating, that you know, and we're all in fault. Like we're you know not talking like okay, we're here. Really having conversations can go a long way. And when they ask you, they will tell you things. Like, you know, Father's Day when the kids were young, you know, and I still do it, I say, hey, when they say, hey, Father's Day, I, I'll ask them, what's one thing I could do, be what, one, one thing, one, what's one thing I could do better to be a better father? Right? Every year, they have that. And one of the things they brought up to me a few years ago, is like, Baba, you know, it's great, but sometimes you travel too much. So then I decided I won't travel more than once a month. Because, like, hey, every weekend, you might be 
where you're not, we'd rather have that. So I was like, but that's better they tell me. Now I'm like, well, do you understand what I'm doing? How can you ask that? But it's better because my responsibility is them, right? Even in the community, as a community member, we have to make sure. Wife's responsibility, husband's responsibility, father's responsibility, mother's responsibility, those become things. Even for them to realize that when I'm like, hey, hey, sometimes if they don't go, I'm like, I have to go see my, my parents. I want them to know I'm going weekly to see my parents. Because I want them to know, because when they get old, that they have that. Or sometimes I'm there, I'm not telling them to do it, I'll do the work, because I want them to realize that's, that's my parents, right? It's not my, it's not my wife's job to take care of my parents, it's mine, and she'll help out of love. But that's where it is for the kids to see that. So then sometimes I'm like, okay, go ahead and do that. Habits that we're going to have to do is daily. If someone comes to your house and say, come over here, sonic them, meet them, right? When they leave, you walk out by the door. If whatever, you, whatever rules that you want to inculcate, they have to start seeing it daily throughout their lives, see it and hearing it and experiencing it. So, you know, just we want to make sure childs need to be heard and seen here. Because I know a lot of times they're like, hey, you can't talk. You just have to hear what we're saying. But if you don't get feedback from them, you don't know what they're going through. And right now in a society like this, we want to make sure that we protect our kids and that Allah, you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, protects them. So uh, any other questions? I know we have a few minutes. Our sheikh, uh, any other things that we need to clarify? Any other questions? Last chance. If, if you can have some goals, I think if you, have, if you can have kids have a love of Allah and the love of the Prophet Sallallahu it's huge. I'll give you an example. When I became the principal of the school, and I, so on Fridays I dress up, I might talk to kids, I, you know, I, I might make jokes. And someone said, Brother Khadri, you know, but you know, when we were back home, when we saw the principal, we would fear. We wouldn't even see them. We were just the fear, so much respect we fear. I said, I don't want these kids to fear me. Because when I'm not around, they're going to act like fools. But if they could love, if they could respect me out of love, that's going to be farther. The prophets are some people didn't be scared. That's a prophet. They wanted to be right around him. And we somehow in our culture, when the sheikh comes, everyone's like, you know, this was really cool. The sheikh over here, you know, I saw me. He was even passing out water. That's, you know, because when, when we were young, I would be like, man, I'm like, sheikh, what you? I couldn't even shake his hand. You know, they would just be like, you know, you know like, Sonia could be like, oh, my God, I touched him. Like, I touched him. You know, like. It should be, because if you look at Vasir, the prophet, they said the prophet, the kids would ask questions, and, you know, he would always be there, and everyone felt that he loved him the most. So the idea of kind of making sure, so having the love of Allah and the love of the prophet, love of family and teachers, love of oneself, you need them to be proud of who they are. Having that, dressing up, this and that, loving of serving others, giving them an idea to give to others, going and helping out, and the love of learning. That this dean, there's more to learn. And when the problem is because we don't know knowledge, we just tell kids that's what it is. To say, no, we'll, we'll find out. And right, so when they ask questions, please, please, please let them get the right answers. And alhamdulillah, we have Shiyu here who could answer those questions. So that was about it. Jazakallah khair. And I ask forgiveness. I know I joke around a few minutes, but if I said anything wrong, I ask forgiveness. Anything good, I ask that you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this, and inshallah. Please make dua for me and our family too, and all of our kids, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair for that wonderful presentation. We have all benefited from it. Uh, with that being said, ICW here, inshallah, will be starting in the fall. You'll see these cards outside. We ask that you benefit from this. Starting in fall 2022, this year, inshallah, we are going to have a full-time pre-K and, K and KG school here at ICW. You'll find the cards here with the information on it. We also have an open house on March 20th. On March 20th, we have an open house, so you can come and see uh, the program that we have prepared for you. You've all heard about the importance of, uh, you know, parenting and education and environment and all of those things. So all of these things, inshallah, have been taken into account in putting this program together, inshallah. So we ask that you benefit from it. We've invested through your help, the community's help. We've, we've uh, revamped the classrooms. We ask that you stop by and take a look at it during the open house. You will see we bought new desks and chairs and we're looking out and we're sourcing all the uh, talent that we can in order for us to be provide the best, to, to provide the best that we can to the community. So we ask that you benefit from that, inshallah. Can, can I just say the, the idea of what the, uh, what the Sheikh has brought up, 
Zero to nine years old is when the kids learn the most. They, can, they have a potential to learn more than four languages because they're just sponges. So having that foundation, starting off with basic understanding of the faith, is, is very important. So with that being said, these cards are outside. Make sure that you pick one up and take home and share with others as well, inshallah. Inshallah, we're going to have Isha in about four minutes. Um, after Isha, there's dessert, coffee, and tea in the cafeteria. We ask that you keep that in the cafeteria and not bring it here. Also, we have self-test COVID uh, kits that are outside on the table. If you need to get tested, you can pick that one up, follow the instructions, do the test, and mail it in, and, you'll, and send it in, and you'll get it in a couple of days. You'll get the results in a day or so, inshallah. With that being said, we're going to conclude now. And we'll call the uh, Azan for Aisha, and then we will have Aisha Salah followed by dessert and tea and coffee in the cafeteria, inshallah. We ask that you keep the kids with you. There's a lot of equipment here as well. As you're getting up, make sure if you can help with the chairs, just pick up the chairs and put them on the side. So we'll have room for Salah, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammad أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة